What is your outlook for platinum, palladium, rhodium going forward and why? Ooh, that's a very good question, Rich. Well, uh, breaking it down, starting with platinum, um, we're actually cautiously optimistic on platinum right now. Um, I think the uh, level of support that we've seen, about 800, 850 in, in recent months, that seems to have held fairly firmly. The floor. The yeah. floor, absolutely. Um, and although it's not uh, you know, guaranteed to move in, uh, in a one-way track uh, on the upside now, there are certain uh, fundamental things that lead us to, to suggest that prices will go higher over time. Um, one of those is that the autocatalyst demand side isn't looking all that bad. Um, there was a time when it appeared that battery electric vehicles were strongly in the ascendant and that was leading to a decreased market share of internal combustion engines. We've seen a bit of a resurgence of hybrid vehicles recently, certainly in Europe and to an extent here in the United States. Uh, and the loadings on those vehicles are similar uh, to what they are on conventional vehicles, even though the engine average much size smaller. is smaller. Exactly right. 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 Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're now seeing this as being probably the biggest growth area uh, in autocatalyst demand that in hybrids over the next several years. Um, we're also very excited about things like hydrogen, to mention that again. You know, it's primarily a platinum technology, also iridium and ruthenium stand to benefit very strongly as we see green hydrogen production, sustainable aviation fuels, e-fuels more generally. So we're pretty pretty positive on uh, on, on platinum. Um, there's also supply risks, as you know very well, as we've been hearing this week at the conference, both on the primary and the secondary uh, side. On the primary side, of course, we've got elections in South Africa right now. It's not quite clear how that's going to play out, whether uh, parties that are advocating for nationalisation of the mining industry may ultimately be included in a, in a future South African government, whether that's a coalition or a, a government of national unity. So it'll be really interesting to see how that plays out. And of course, there's the ongoing threat of, of labour disruption, of electricity supply disruption in South Africa. And those can be those uh, trigger events for, for prices to move higher if we see any short term disruption. Right. Uh, on the secondary side, of course, volumes have been relatively subdued over the past couple of years um, due to due to prices, but also end of life vehicle availability. And we're starting to see that change a little bit, a bit more supply coming back to the market. But of course, it's subdued compared with where it was two or three years ago when prices were much higher. Um, so overall, platinum, cautiously optimistic, palladium, rhodium, I treat those two quite similarly in that they're overwhelmingly dependent on the autocatalyst market. And although we're not um, getting too um, too pessimistic on that autocatalyst market, um, it's not necessarily going to be growing as strongly as it was in, in preceding years. And uh, in that, we're looking at places like China, where battery electric vehicles are taking a bigger market share, prompted by government stimulus, and that growth is, is not necessarily guaranteed in those gasoline engines, which use palladium and rhodium primarily. Um, the other thing about um, palladium and rhodium is, of course, there is still a lot of metal out there that's been collected by auto catalyst scrap collectors that can come back to the market at a certain time, at a certain price. Uh, what price that is, of course, with... Tends to be a little hoarding at that yeah. level. There certainly seems to be. That uh, that definitely seems the way of it, Ed. I mean, uh, you know, when prices not that long ago were $3,000 and $30,000 for uh, for rhodium, uh, you know, it inventory was, was moving. It was, yeah, it was a good time to get that mobilized. And, mm -hmm. and now we kind of see the opposite of that, where prices have been very subdued. Uh, material flows are relatively sticky. Uh, we're not necessarily seeing the end of life vehicle market all that lively because the new car market is is only slowly kind of churning well, through. Well, we're optimistic that if there's a bump in, in the, uh, the PGM basket mix for AutoCap, that mm. the pricing would increase maybe 10 15, 20% in that range, we should see some disgorging of that. Mm -hmm. Well, that would certainly be the uh, the logical thing, wouldn't it, if we see that price appreciation and uh, it incentivizes that um, material to be mobilized. And if you look at the long-term structural trends, you know, there are more highly loaded catalysts available, which are reflective of the emission standards of 10 or 15 years ago. And of course, as right. those standards have got tighter over time, there'll be generally higher loaded uh, catalysts coming through. Um, there's better collection uh, networks around the world, smelting and processing. Uh, so that's putting that uh, material back into circulation more quickly. And then ultimately price being that, that trigger point to mobilize that material. So we may be a, a little bit more cautious on, on palladium and rhodium prices through the rest of this year and into next year. 
uh, not necessarily going to be shooting the lights out, so right. not really seeing um, uh, a huge amount of movement. But relatively speaking, uh, things a lot better than they were maybe a year ago when palladium and rhodium prices were dropping very, very steeply. So yeah, overall, I think we are, if you look at the Johnson Matthew figures or the Metals Focus or SFA figures, they're all telling us that uh, platinum, palladium and rhodium are markets that are in deficit right now. That's I've right. got to say, it doesn't feel as though uh, doesn't. palladium mm -hmm. is in deficit, right? No. Um, you know, there's plenty of above ground stock, um, you know, liquidity is, is very adequate. So, uh, you know, we'll see how that plays out. But um, of the three metals, I think I'd be more optimistic on the platinum. Uh, palladium and rhodium, let's wait and see. Supply-related event could, of course, help those metals. But generally speaking, with with more secondary supply, stable primary supply, and maybe subdued demand, um, though that's the problem that uh, that those markets have. The other thing is that we don't see a whole lot of other applications for palladium and rhodium apart from autocatalyst. 80% of the market is... Right. Is, is coming from all. Well, I brought that up. Yeah, right. Yeah, we, I was going to ask if if anybody's come up with other means for for all that surplus palladium well, that will be coming well, into the recycling. I know but, there's a battery. Somebody's working on a possible potential battery with palladium. And it usage, takes years to develop a but large that's, commercial. That's the right. problem. Exactly right. The time I mean, frame. This is this is what the IPMI is now now working on. Uh, Mark Caffrey, our outgoing president, is going to be working with the IPMI Foundation on putting together um, a, if you like, a, a PGM challenge of looking for new applications for for all of the PGMs, but with a particular focus maybe on palladium and rhodium. These are the markets that, uh, relatively speaking, are going to lose out uh, compared to the other ones because they're just not used so much in. In the hydrogen industry, for example, we've talked about that overwhelming um, dependence on the auto market. And in the longer term, we might expect the auto market to decrease overall as we see greater electrification. So so that's really the challenge to find some new applications. When I, when I first discovered the mechanical properties and the chemical properties of palladium, mm -hmm. in comparison to other elements on the periodic table, I got excited about it and I thought, wow, this is pretty sexy. <laughs> because it's versatile. It could do a lot. Yes. But yeah. where are the applications today? Yeah, absolutely. It's a very versatile metal, and there is that degree of interchangeability uh, between the three main PGMs, as we've seen in the autocatalyst industry over a long period. You know, uh, palladium substituting platinum, going back a little the other way over recent the years. Switch, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. and the same with rhodium as well. Mm -hmm. So if the if the price point is, is favourable to use some more of that metal and a little less of the other, then, you know, that's the switch that will be made. We see it in the glass manufacturing industry. Right. You know, when rhodium was up at $30,000 an ounce, it wasn't that popular to use rhodium. Guess what? So it was a case of substituting that, putting more platinum into those uh, bushings. And and and, and uh, somebody found a stockpile of it and decided to sell it into the market. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> whoever that was. No. We, we remember that day. <laughs> what? <laughs> right, exactly. Was it like 50,000 ounces it or was something a, like that? It was a big old it, it chunk. Was there was a big, big chunk. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. Like, what? They did good. Exactly. Exactly. So <laughs> good for and, them. Yeah. And we've seen it go back the other way now. Right. Rhodium has been stable for a period mm -hmm. of time, and there's been a bit of substitution back into rhodium because it does give certain uh, additional durability to, uh, to to glass bushings and 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 other uh, fabricated right. parts. So it's that trade off. You know, yeah. yes, it's a higher cost metal, right. but you might be able to use your part for two or three years as opposed to a year, eighteen months. So right. you make that cost calculation and you maybe go a bit more in favor of rhodium. And, you know, the best brains in, in our industry are, are currently engaged in looking at these applications, whether it's from a chemical or of mechanical point of view, right, to find the, the, the next big thing for, for palladium and rhodium. And there's some promising things. I mean, you look at uh, hydrogen purification, for example, uh, palladium can be used as a catalyst in that to provide the ultra pure hydrogen that has to go into a fuel cell. Um, it's also used in the distribution and storage of hydrogen alongside platinum. You've also got some applications, as we've been hearing about this week, for ruthenium, uh, for ammonia storage. And there's other uh, potential touch points for those metals uh, throughout that value chain. So we're very, we're very excited about what might be coming down the track. And um, as I say, with a bit of support from the IPMI and from the industry, maybe we can do a bit more on, on finding some new and exciting applications. You know, in a previous podcast today, we were talking about the PGM basket. And what came out of the conversation was PGMs compared to gold and silver, are, are kind of a 
exciting industry because of all of the challenges and the new technologies and the changes that occur mm -hmm. in a brief period of time. Yeah. So it's a very yeah. exciting segment of really the periodic is. table. Mm. It, it is. And, you know, the great thing about um, not only the, the industrial nature of these PGMs uh, is is that their system metals, gold and silver, are incredible stores of value. And in a world of great geopolitical uncertainty, we've got the elections going on around the world this year, we've still got wars, unfortunately, being fought in, in various parts of the world. And you see gold has hit a series of record highs this year. Right. Silver's gone along for the ride. Silver's got a great industrial profile as well, That's right. whether it's used in solar PV and some of the 5G electronics in uh, in data centers and AI, you know, huge range of, of, of versatile applications. And, and the good thing about the precious metal complex as a whole is that, you know, if you've got a, a time of relatively weaker industrial demand, chances are you've got some hedging going on in gold and silver as a as a hedge against that uncertainty. Right. And similarly, you know, when you've got a pro-cyclical market, maybe gold and silver are not doing so well. People are feeling better about the economy, about their personal finances. But guess what? You've got the PGMs, uh, in some cases, going gangbusters in, in industrial applications. And we're not saying we're in uh, either one of those two extremes at the moment. It feel, yeah. feels as though we're uh, in a bit more of a cautious world, given what's, what's happening right now given that gold is hitting those all-time highs right. uh, and PGMs are relatively subdued. But right. these things can change. That's how it feels. Yeah.